Hi, everybody. It's Jessica Stone at Stansbury Research, and I have reached Bill McGilton of Big Trade at his home office. And Bill, um, we are seeing an amazing push by Ford with this new Bronco. They've sort of revamped it. And um, typically, you've only seen Ford as a company to bet against in your recommendations. Will this release, this big rollout, and by the way, they've already sold out of all the first phase of, of this vehicle. They've, they've essentially gotten enough orders to sell out. Will all of this popularity of the Ford Bronco change your opinion on Ford? Well, as far as a business, no. I mean, I think uh, I was looking at the Ford Bronco. I mean, it seems like, you know, uh, a cool, cool vehicle to compete with the Wrangler, um, but I don't see it changing Ford circumstances. Um, simply because Ford has too much debt. But I think it's, uh, you know, it's probably a great way to, for Ford to compete with um, Jeep, Jeep Wrangler, which, um, you know, they sold 230,000 uh, Wranglers last year. And they're, they're about, they're off so far this year, they're at 100,000 in the first six months. But I think Ford could cut into the, the Wrangler's market share with, with the Bronco and I think that could potentially help uh, Ford. So I think from I think from their point of view, it's actually a smart move. Okay. Now you talk about the debt. How much debt does Ford have right now? One hundred one hundred and sixty nine billion dollars. Okay. And and, there, and that and you've really stressed that that's the main reason you are shorting the stock if you recommend it. Right. If I, I I'm, right now we have no position on Ford in big trade. We closed out our position at the end of March. Um, but you know, yeah, if we, we look at Ford from the short side, simply because there's just too much debt. So one of the things you've raised as a problem in terms of Ford getting out of debt is that, um, there are several things they need to be doing that the other car companies are doing to compete in the future. And those have to do with their progress on electric vehicles, on automation. And even now we're seeing all of these companies really have to find ways of selling vehicles and marketing vehicles in the middle of a pandemic. Where are they with those and how does that impact their viability as a company? So 90% of uh, Chinese consumers, according to the study, what they, they want to have an electric vehicle. 70% uh, Europeans and 50% Americans. So the market is headed to electric vehicles. Ford has been slow um, developing electric vehicles. Now it might be smart, right, to wait and see what happens um, and try to come in at the back end. But so far they're behind. Uh, this year they're going to release a Mustang Mach 5 uh, sports uh, SUV. So I don't know, you know, what kind of numbers they're going to release on that. But then they're, they plan later on to release um, a Ford F-150 electric vehicle, which, of course, Ford's F-150 is the best-selling truck in the U.S., 900,000 vehicles a year. And automation, they say 2022, but I don't think anybody is going to have a fully automated vehicle in 22. I think you mean right autonomous, now. not automated. Autonomous, right? uh, uh, yeah, uh, autonomous, yeah. And so they have time with that, I think. But, you know, their, their main strategy is selling trucks. In terms of their truck strategy, um, it, are you concerned at all that this uh, new product, this Bronco, will cut into that? Or does it complement it? Well, it may cut into it, right? Someone who is buying a Ford 150 might go and buy a Bronco, but I think their strategy is to compete against the Wrangler. But danger with just truck, the truck strategy is that strategy depends on cheap oil. So if if that if our oil situation changes, that's going to be a uh, that's going to put Ford into a lot of trouble. I think of Ford, and I think a lot of Americans think of Ford, not only in connection with Henry Ford and the legacy of Henry Ford, but also as the one major U.S. car company that did not take the bailout 10 years ago. And so it's sort of lauded as a survivor in that sense, right? It didn't need government help. Um, but uh, do you think that they're banking on being able to potentially get the backstop of the Fed if they can't do well this time? To an extent, they're already being helped by the Fed's uh, new stimulus package in March, right? Because they were downgraded by S&P to junk, but 
They created special purpose vehicles to buy uh, corporate bonds under certain circumstances. And they stretched for like uh, 17 companies approximately back then. Ford was one of them that even though they were downgraded to junk, they could, they could buy their bonds still. When the Fed signaled it would buy corporate bonds, there, were, there, was, there was additional liquidity and additional help for Ford, whether the Fed bought the actual Ford bonds or not. Right. I, like they, I'm not sure the, the exact bonds the, the Fed has been purchasing. The point is, is by having the Fed uh, in there, it just, and knowing, the market knowing that they could purchase Ford's corporate bonds, it helps put a floor under those bonds. It helps Ford get financing and, and the Fed can also go in and directly loan Ford money. Thanks so much, Bill McGilton, for following the uh, evolution of Ford. You have some pretty deep knowledge about their books, at least. And uh, we will continue to see how the Bronco does and whether it, in fact, can uh, rejuvenate uh, parts of Ford's business. Our thanks to you. And if you would like to see much more content just like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.